What's up guys, welcome back to another episode, gonna go through some more stuff on the S4. So I got um, a couple of parts that were delivered, uh, this is a cabin or particle filter. Um, one of the things that I noticed that uh, with the car is it stinks of fuel and everything, probably because it's overfueling like a bitch, but it stinks in the cabin and I've never changed the cabin filter particle filter so I did a bit of googling and found out um, it should be a piece of piss. So I thought, um, Euro Car Parts had a deal on, this was 60% like off, so it worked out like six quid. Well, six quid, you can't go wrong. So looked up, it should be situated under here, so you got to do this, you've got to remove the, this seems to come off all the time nowadays to get under there. Then the cover for your plastics as well, that pops out. Probably put the battery on a trickle charge to be honest, that would make more sense. Put that over here. Then this here is your cabin filter. Right, so what I'm going to do is I will take off the great Torx bits. I bet it's a 25, which is always one I can't find. So I'll, I'll give that a crack, change that up, and uh, yeah, crack on with some more stuff. You can safely say that someone at Audi thought. I know, I'm gonna, f I'm gonna take the piss here. I'm gonna make it so that it's incredibly inaccessible for virtually every bolt on this car. Anyway, that one's out after a bit of fuckery and I'm hoping it's the last one. But saying that, I reckon I'm gonna have to take off the wiper plates because this is then stuck on there. Oh, that's a fuck. That's the ECU, that's not even a friggin' cabin filter. Actually, I need to take this off anyway because I need to mess around with the ECU. Because I do, hopefully, that would make sense why it's got all these cables coming out of it. I knew it was on one side. I was, problem is, I was, um, I watched a video that was uh, an American car, so it's on the other side. That's annoying. Um, I'm gonna put these in a bag though and I'm gonna leave that because I do have a potential new tune coming for this. Um, I've got the JHM tune on it, uh, but there's a really cool tune that I'd like for the ECU remap. So I'm gonna leave that one off, I'll put them in a bag, mark them up so I know what's what. Um, but I'm actually gonna move on to the other side where the particle filter is, which might be helpful. Well, this one looks a lot easier, so just unclip the clips, pull it out. And you can see this one has never been changed in my ownership. So look at the state of that. I've got a feeling that that's not that effective anymore, to be honest. So that is done. This bad boy, I reckon, will stop all of those god awful smells getting in. It's my car. So, bonus to that, that'll slip right in here. Airflow, oh freak sake. Right, read it, so airflow that way, so it's gotta be done this way then. So the airflow's going down into read the instructions, Ross. Right, simple. So that was a lot quicker and easier than taking the cover off the friggin' ECU. Right, so let's get that one back in there. Well, that was a piece of piss. Two minutes, job done. One of the things you can't probably quite see from that angle is this wing. So. It's been pushed in at this point here. So I need to try and pull that out. So I'm just gonna try and kind of really pop it out slightly here.
This is probably one of the, well, so it's the second biggest job I have to do, um, pulling this out. I've kind of got it a bit more straight. Um, you kind of see the, the line of the arch is a bit better. I've obviously got to touch in some of these gaps, but I pulled out where it was pushed in um, with my unorthodox methods, but it's kind of getting there. So I sanded that bit down. What I'll do is I'll sand it down a bit more um, and I'll hit it with a quick skim of filler and then that, let them dry and see if I can shape it um, a bit better. I want to cover, obviously try and keep the the filler level, just a, a little skim over the top because it's shitty filler. Um, the biggest thing I really have to to do after, in general, is the is the rear bumper. That's still going to take a lot of massaging to get out. I might even have to look to see if I can replace it. Um, other cracks, that's actually fine. But I need to see if I can actually heat that enough to get that to come out. I might have to see if I can get uh, a proper hot bastard heat gun um, because that is a bit of a pain in the knob. Um, I tried it with a hairdryer. It does get hot, uh, but just not quite hot enough. That's quite a, quite a mark on there. So uh, I really need to give it a lot of heat to try and make it pliable enough to regain the shape. This bit needs to come out a bit more around there. That bit needs to go in a bit. Uh, I'm not really worried about repairing the top bit up here. That bit's fairly easy. Filling those bits and sanding them down isn't a problem. It's just regaining that shape on that corner. Uh, I think I'll probably be able to do it. And normally I'd just say, fuck it, I'm just gonna get a new bumper, but they're really hard to find. So yeah, that's why I haven't replaced the bumper. I've been looking, but the S4 rear bumpers seem to be like hen's teeth and I really don't want to go to the main dealer for one because that'll be about 400 quid at least. They're probably more now actually. So I'm trying to avoid that if, if possible. And if I can get a 20 quid heat gun and a bit of time and effort, then, then so be it. So coming back to the stuff I did last time, I'm actually really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, this is pretty much all sorted on the back now. So that is probably as best I'm going to get it. All of the dents down here are gone. It's nice and smooth. Um, I just need to give this a quick going over where the rust was there, but again, that's pretty much sorted too. Uh, so yeah, those things are coming off the list. Um, I'm gonna remove that now where I plugged up the hole, uh, but rear bumper bracket as well. That's sorted. I don't think, I think I'll just hit that with a spray can. So that'll be, that'll be, that bit will be done. Um, and then I have also sanded back this where we were working here. So you can see I hit that with some rust treatment there. Um, then with some primer. But what I'm gonna do now is again, a very thin coat of filler over there uh, just to skim it. So I'll do that now um, and let that one dry. So I'll do the two front wings with this skimmer filler uh, and then leave them to dry and see how we go not in any way endorsed by them, but I have to say thanks to my friend Sam for recommending me get one of these, is the U-Pole onion board. Uh, it makes mixing up filler rather easy enough. Very quick, small amount over. But what I'll do is I'll quickly switch to the other side and put a bit on that side too. This side's a bit more complicated with its shape, but I put far too much hardener in this. Start with that. They're the main bits that need going over. There's a small dent there. 
and that bit needs kind of reshaping slightly. So what I'll do is I'll wait for that to dry, give it a sand off and see where the raised bits are. Um, and yeah, we'll crack on from that bit. Yeah, I'm not quite happy with the, the line on this. Um, it's got a lip there, a slight lip, which is really annoying. Um, I've never used this um, plastic filler before. Uh, and it's a bit disconcerting because it's black and you can't really see when you've mixed in the hardener but and again I've probably done a bit much but I'm just going to try and fill this like that from a bit further back That's gone down. Now I'm gonna leave it like that to set and I'll hit it with some sandpaper and see if I can shape that a bit better. Just to follow the lines of the bumper, there was just a kind of a, a small lip there where the plastic was higher um, and I couldn't get a good line on it. So hoping that this will allow me to just contour it a bit better across there. Uh, so I'll see how this this stuff goes. Like I said, I've never used it before. Used a bit much there, but see what the, whatever it's called. Fat big boy plastic fillers like. I'll come back to that one in a bit. It's actually been quite a while since I started this and uh, I left the boot open, which I think left the light on. So I'm gonna see if it starts. Right, let's try getting the flower boy started. definitely tell she's got a bit of a misfire um, a bit smoky but yeah battery's fine but she's a bit of a beast and I'm looking forward to getting this back on the road so while I've been cracking through these jobs I've been trying to work out all the things I actually still have left um, left to do uh, obviously I need to get all these things painted um, but once the, I'm happy with the bodywork, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, but the main part really is once I've finished with like the rear bumper um, and sorting out the, the front arch bits and obviously finishing off the front bumper, is then getting round to fixing the more mechanical things, which then require um, more time and more money. So it will be a bit slower. Uh, I've just got to do these things when I've got time. Uh, in the evenings, weekends, stuff like that. Very busy at the same time. Um, again, Philly wants to crack on and give me a hand with the um, stuff in the in the engine compartment. Um, but we've got to try and find time to fit it all in at the same time. So, yeah, it might slow down a little bit when it gets to the engine stuff. It is a lot more complicated. We do need to start stripping down the entire top of the engine. One of the things that I was led to believe as well that um, the chain rattle a lot of people say that this is due to uh, tension and e-changing but this is this only got up just over a hundred thousand miles on so it shouldn't actually be too bad uh, a lot of people say it's the fuel return so the rattle on startup and they say it's the not fuel return the oil return to the bottom of the uh, filter here so what the I watched the guy do it um, he stripped off the whole inlet um, the cover at the bottom and replaced the valve, the inlet valve on the
the bottom of this there's two valves inlet and outlet so it obviously allows it to go in now one of the valves apparently perishes which causes the oil to go back down um and it, it essentially doesn't allow uh enough oil to the top of the engine something like that anyway i watched a 40 minute video on the guy doing it um the frustrating thing is he didn't show the outcome he just said it worked so i'm going to give that a shot because that's like 90 quid in parts and i'm going to be taking all of this off anyway uh i need to start what i need to really do is buy some shelves to go here to put on all the engine components and stuff as so i start stripping them down so i don't lose anything because that's exactly what i'll probably do and uh yeah then i think really it's a case of starting to just strip this down uh, the only other jobs i have um after that are kind of all it needs a, obviously a massive clean up um the, i need a new ballast for this which i can put back in as i'm putting all back together i need a new cable uh for the bonnet release catch that's never worked and it's snapped in there so i need to do a, some slight adjustments on uh on this front end for that but again i'll be doing that when the engine goes back in um and then the rest of it's yeah the, the paint and getting the inside a couple of bits sorted there so there aren't huge amounts of things the main part was the bodywork and the engine stuff and so i'll be really cracking on with the engine stuff um but like i said it's going to take more time i'm not exactly going to be able to cover getting it all done in one episode because even just tearing it down is probably going to take me some time uh and i hopefully can come and help me because at least then she can bag stuff up and write the names of stuff on it so She's a lot more organised than I am with these things. So I'm going to leave it there for today. I've cracked on with a bit more bodywork. Next time, I really hope to finish off um, the front bumper and uh, the front wings. So at least then I will have kind of this whole front section of bodywork as happy as I can be with it. I'm happy with the boot. That's awesome. As soon as I can get the front bumper to the same level and then the front wings at the same level as well. When I'm happy with those, uh, the only thing I need to do is order a heat gun so I can heat that bastard of a rear bumper and try and fix that too. So then once I've done those, I'll really be happy with all the bodywork. Uh, they're the main parts I wanted to do. And once I've got that, it's just it's just about painting them. So once they're in primer, I can leave them and they can be the last thing that's, things to be done. The main thing I really want to focus on now is, after that, getting started with this. So next it'll be order some shelves for there. I'll finish off bodyworky stuff. And then in the next episode, hopefully, I can give a crack on with some more here. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Like I said, it's a bit slow progress, but hopefully it will start to start to get quicker um no it won't what am i saying it's fucking bullshit uh it won't get quicker it'll probably get slower uh body work is actually quite nice because you can see it happening quite quickly anyway thanks for watching tune in to the next episode don't forget to like subscribe all that sort of gubbins and yeah see you on the next one cheers